Most people in life are looking at how do I make a life worth living in retirement with having me. When I'm trying to figure out my life, I have to figure out how to listen to God for my own life. Because if I listen to too many people, if I listen to too many humans, I might totally monkey myself, I might totally miss out on the life God planned for me. You see, God puts people on our path to change us, transform us, and improve us. And when God does that, we have to know how to handle that. Sometimes, though, we start to take our conversations that are private with the people that we meet and the others that we greet and start sharing those dialogues with other people. And then those people start to chime in from an outside perspective. And while that's sometimes valuable, most of the time it's not. A lot of times it destroys the relationships that we're building, the care that God is giving to our lives and helping us to really put on the right and proper lives. You see, if we're in the wrong life, we are stuck in a rut, we are stuck in a job, we are unpleased with our life, we're unpleased with our child, and we might just not be happy at all. But we don't always acknowledge happiness today because when people are happy, other people are, well, amazed and sometimes upset. You see, a jealous woman will ruin a man's life out of her lies, her stupidity of play. Well, he doesn't like me, so I'm not going to let him like anyone at all. Well, throw the motherfucker up. There's someone else out there for you today. When I talk about these things, I'm very guttural. I'm very specific. I'm very, well, ornery about it because my life has been impacted by so many people who just thought they'd play God in my life. The only God in my life is the Lord above all people. The Holy Ghost helps me to find the food that I need the most for the day. And I find marvelous sandwiches. I find incredible hot dogs. I find everything that I need because I simply listen to God say, what does my body need to eat today? And as a result, I have lost 16 to 18 inches off my waist. Now, if you're struggling with your weight, God can do that for you too, but it could be that you're eating the not necessarily the wrong food. You're just eating it in the wrong proportions and you're not eating enough food during the day. You see, sometimes really heavy set people need to go to six meals a day that are very small and healthy. And that keeps them grazing all day and they feel good because they know they can eat, but they're not harming themselves. They're allowing their digestive systems to work and to perform great feats. But you have to be willing to submit your life to God to let go of that idea that I'm too fat to do this or I'm too skinny to do this or he doesn't really like me, he's just being kind to me. Well, yes, there's a lot of men and women who are just friends today. It's called Plutonic Relationships. And a Plutonic Relationship is a regardful man having a friendship with a regardful woman. There is no sexual inappropriateness. There's no sexual friskiness. There's no inappropriate touch. There's just good old-fashioned fun. And a lot of kids on campus do those things today. But what I'm always amazed about is what I see late at night, that there's one girl hanging out with a good five or six guys, and I look at that situation and go, this is not wise. This is never wise in a day, a day of technology, a day of pornography, a day of audiophile, and audio tipping <coughs> abuse. And I don't want to go into all the stuff that can put your little stupid ass girl life into a noose. But you don't need to go home and make somebody a baby daddy for you. And you don't need to be foolish about the fact that that boy who's pulling you close to him and making you feel so sexy, so hot, is perfectly clean with his thing in order to put it into you today. So let's be real. My audio channels are not PG-13. My program has nothing to do with my past in marketing or Japanese language teaching. What I speak about is what the Lord wants young people on a college campus to think about. That life is short-lived when we don't plan our life, when we don't plan our romantic times, when we don't realize that a bit of inebriation can fuck our whole life. And what I mean by that is pretty quite clear. I saw some incredible making out sessions going on yesterday when I was just sitting outside enjoying the beautiful air and I thought there, sat there and thought, somebody needs a room because I don't want to look at this and I literally got up and left. It was a beautiful thing, but I don't need to be a part of that. And neither does the rest of your fucking friends walking down the street. Take it home, take it to a room, take it to a hotel, but be prepared for the maturity that's required as well. If your man is not packing what he needs to hold on to to keep himself from shooting in the wrong direction in you, then you have fucked your little life in yourself. And if you're walking by a homeless person and you can't fucking see yourself as ever homeless, that's on you. Because in a time of COVID, in a time of pandemic, in a time of world wars going on around the world that we're not seeing because we're talking so much on COVID, you are missing out on the truth. But if your mommy and daddy died, what would you do for money? 
How would you live in that marvelous scheme? How would you do things that are cool on the scene? How are you learning to live frugally with the time that you do have? How are you spending your time around your studies? Are you choosing and learning when to go shopping, where to go shopping, who to go shopping with so you don't feel stupid? Or are you choosing to shop at the most expensive store in town because it's right next to you? Instead of taking a 30 minute bus ride to go out to the mall where you can pick up some really good quality food that's inexpensive and allows you to have more playtime money on the weekends. You see, people have rights. And when people have rights, they have the right to say, hey, I never asked you for a thing, but today I really need something because my heart is having problems and I can't move a lot today. But when you piss all over me with something that some little man is doing, I really don't care. I am busy working on my life, and if you want to talk to me, I'm more than happy to graciously speak with you. But if you're going to play with me, I'm going to send you off to your hell because you've played a foolish little child's game on my life. My life is mine. Yours is yours. When you want to hire a consultant, when you want to hire a prophet, when you want to hire a psychic, you pay him. You don't sit there and piss around like you're so cute and you're so swell that you don't have to do that today. And if I give you something, I'm giving it to you genuinely because I think it's something you can value and utilize. But it doesn't mean that you're totally off the hook on your devaluation of my human life. What it should say to you is that you should value my life a little bit more than the others because I'm showing you regard for your soul, regard for your needs, regard for what's going on in your house, regard for your fucking cat. It doesn't really matter to me what it is. What matters is you told me something about a goal you were dealing with or a thing you were working on or something in your life, and I said, oh, I can remember and I can give. And this is what a man really does. When I ask you for something that's $3 and I'll be happy to pay you back, I expect you to get off your fucking ass, walk across the street, go pick that thing up, bring it back to me, and don't spend a whole fucking half a day trying to figure out how to do that. It's $3. And in a short while, I'll have that $3 to give back to you. I have a marvelous friend named Jessie who gave me a cigar for my girl. I smoked one already, and I'm waiting her for her to come and enjoy the other cigarello with me. And my girls will do that with me. But I still have that, and I'm thankful for it. It was only a dollar. But he paid for it for me. I offered him back the dollar. He said, no way. Now it's kind of insulting me because I care about you. And I've got you. And I know he's got me. He knows I like Doritos. He knows I need PNT. And he said, I've got you. So I appreciate that about him. But when I compliment someone, it means I compliment someone. When I care about someone, I care about someone. I don't fuck around in the middle ground because life is not like that. You can't play your friends with someone and then your bedfellows with someone else and then your enemies with someone else. Yes, there are frenemies. And yes, the art of war says keep your enemies close. But when my enemies fucked all over my life in this town, I promise you, I will screw their little asses into the ground. Don't you fucking play with me. Don't you fucking think you've got rights to me. And don't you fucking play around in my life or my relationships and definitely don't you get my love life. You fuck into that love life of mine and I will kill your life. You will never be the same after what I'm done with you. But here's a guy about me. The intelligence that I have is taking me higher than I can possibly imagine. Because people are listening to me in a very high place. But I can't brag about that because it's inappropriate. I can't say who they are because that's inappropriate. Because in order for me to get my job, confidentiality is important. It's appropriate. If you don't know what confidentiality is, if you don't know what intellectual property is, if you don't know what copyright law is, if you don't know what plagiarism is, get the fuck out of college. 